Pastor Jane Wong from uh, the yes. Press Academy. Uh, um, no, we're good. Uh, the world's kind of a violent place sometimes. And sometimes we teach things at our school. We don't teach this at our school very often, but we typically share with the Federation. We trust you guys. Um, so a lot of times we'll teach something that seems very violent, but it's also just to let you have an idea of what they might be trying to do to you. If a person pulls a knife, it's very important to understand the dangers of what can actually happen to you if they know what they're doing. We're going to show you some offensive moves with that, and then also show you some techniques uh, that are from, from empty hand to a person with a knife, from knife to knife. If you happen to have a knife, one of the most common weapons on Earth, the most common weapon on Earth throughout history of the knife. I mean, the statistics on the amount of people that carry just simple folders that you can get at Home Depot. They get money for that. Home Depot. <laughs> 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 no, but the amount of people that have knives just from those kind of holy knives, little short knives, um, the size of the knife does not matter. It, it can be the little, some small thing, but a knife is a knife and a sharpened edge. It's a sharpened edge. Uh, you have to be very, very careful about that. Uh, but we also have techniques that are from uh, two different kinds of techniques for knives. Emotional techniques, overt emotional stabbing type of techniques, and a person that is very cool and calm and is just a very mean killer type guy <laughs> where he's just going to hold it, you won't see it, he flips it, boom, and he's on you really quickly. So there's different applications of how to defend yourself from that. Um, we'll start with uh, what we'll teach you on this. There's a basically, there, we, we start with eight basic movements for offensive and defensive knife strikes just to give you the idea of the different movements that the knife could be coming at you. Uh, usually, we, we would consider this a defensive uh, position on the knife, holding it here, usually your thumb is up the back to give you more power for more cutting and uh, filleting, as we call it, of the uh, limbs. Uh, of the fish. So from here, more, more again, more uh, defensive movements. That you cut through, down, down, up, up, through the body, through the body, straight in, and straight up with a rip out. And those are your more defensive movements that you'd be using. Then when we switch to the offensive, it goes from here, the knife flips to that position where you're here. A lot of times this you know, this is where you can you don't even see it. Okay, you can, you can be walking this way, you can walk to your car this way, you can have that knife palm nice, nice to calm, and then it comes right out whenever you're ready. And those movements are with the leg forward generally, same basic positions, through the body, through the body, ice pick, ice pick, body, right. One of the key things with this also, taking the obvious violence out of it, it focuses the mind, it focuses you, making you have to hit a point. Um, one of the key things that is an issue of mine is, is sloppiness. I, I just don't like it in martial arts. Um, because it is also a part, you know, it's also how you express yourself. So being able to tell you very specifically, it's also the drill. So you can kind of take a positive thing out of a very, very, very uh, seemingly negative type of thing. So those are the eight basic offensive and defensive strikes that we'll get into, and you'll see uh, movements throughout in what we're going to next. All right, now, if a person attacks you in this manner, which is the non-emotional type of an attack, um, we're also going to talk about body movement. One of the principles, I think sometimes technique in seminars, you know, you're not going to remember the technique, but if you listen and remember the principle, it might click in when you need it. But spacing, or my, as they say in Japanese, what he wants to do when he steps in is touch me. So what I'm going to do is in my movement, move in a manner where he can't touch me, but I can touch him. That does not mean moving in a manner where he can't touch me, because he can still touch me. I've got targets that are still in range. So you have to totally move your body. So as it moves here, I move out of the way. I can assess what I want to do. I try and always hold it. You don't want to be overt. It's like a card game. You want to hide your shot. I don't want to be here because he'll just change direction and, and do something that he wants to do. So I'll wait for the last second. Move in. And then we obviously we move into jujitsu. I consider every single entry, as I say all the time, that's why I'm tired of hearing it. <laughs> but every single entry you do, whether it's American boxing, whatever it is, it's all gateways to jujitsu. Not that jujitsu is a superior, supreme thing, but
but jujitsu just meaning grappling joint locks because I want the fight to stop. I don't want to deal with his pain tolerance. I want to snap it so it doesn't matter what his pain tolerance is. If I break his wrist, this thing cannot no longer hold the weapon, and that's my goal. Um, from here, obviously, there's a main thing you can get up here. Oh, right here, I just want to slam him to the ground. But <laughs> for old times. All right, so um, that's just the initial movement there. If he swings through, comes back at me, he fangs in the snake. Snakes are pointless without teeth. So that's the, the basic terminology of that. He fangs the snake. From here, obviously, I'm on the outside, so much more safe. I can spin into an arm mark, straight down to the ground, force him to release the weapon. And if you get the weapon, there's also other sides to this thing that you might want to co concentrate on. Sorry about your elbow there. Concentrate on. I wouldn't take this and start doing anything with it like that because obviously that's psychotic and homicidal. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things you might want to think about is if you do have a knife, there's different sides. Um, and knowing your weapon, knowing your opponent, all these things help you defend yourself. Uh, if you do happen to get a knife, we'll teach you how to use the pommel, which is the handle part, which is a beautiful, um, beautiful part of the weapon to use. There's obviously the, the edge. There's also the flat part, knowing whether it's a single-edged weapon, double-edged weapon, folding. There are different things like that really help you uh, assess the situation when you find yourself in it. Um, also, oh, oops, just so you can see. If it is, now that's not emotional. Oh, okay, let's we'll just do this too. We're going to do this too. since we have an hour. If he's trying to stab me, I move. If he tries to stab me again, I move. I make sure that I am out of range. What I'm going to do timing wise is I'm going to be the snake. So it's even cool. You can step in, strike, boom. Gosh, that's just, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you see how you move, and you're moving in a certain way so that you maintain your safety. If it's an overt emotional attack, it doesn't have to be a knife. It could be a beer bottle, it could be anything. Um, he comes over top, uh, step in. One of the key things, this is more of a hard system position here. One of the key things is not to sell your shot, but not to, to, to show your, your faith. If I start reaching for it, he's just going to change direction. He's going to slide down. So I want to be in a moment in time. I wait until I'm at a specific moment in time. It's also a form of defending because I hit him. He's attacking me. Now, who's attacking who? I, I'm in a stronger position physically. It's like a two-by-four holding up a, a wall. I'm nice and strong. This hurts like you can't even imagine, so we won't be going that hard. So most likely, the, the uh, knife will disappear or, or fall out of the gun. It does not matter. Because I'm going to slip in immediately, locking into a figure four. This little fulcrum right here, this motion right here. Let's see, when did it go? Right there. I have not snapped it. I haven't taken it down, which would rip, obviously, the arm out of my shoulder. Um, okay. Now he's got two. Yes, then we go into this. We grab things, grab weapons. Uh, we'll also talk about how to defang if he is coming at you, however it is. It does not matter. Simple cross strikes here. If he doesn't let go, he comes back. It doesn't matter. That way, I'm going to attack. And then, of course, this could be just like the palm mode of the blade. Open him up, hit him in the temple, drive him to the head, holding a peel, obviously, application here, um, taking him to the ground. If you don't want to, if I'm hitting him here, taking him to the ground, he doesn't want to go. You'll go when you want him to go. And at that point, you obviously would take the weapon. Make sure you always grab the weapon. A lot of times people are getting ahead of us. Yeah. We still got the weapon. Yeah. <laughs> this can also be pretty much anything. This, I mean, if you have one of these, great. If not, it can be a you know, beer bottle. You can take off your belt. You have a nice leather belt on. You can take that up, fold it in half. I mean, if you you know keep your distance, That's get that belt on. Old school on. style. The new baggy <coughs> pants will take it off. You'll have yeah. <laughs> 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 Chopsticks. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to say that again? So anything, anything you can, anything you can use to put distance between you and your opponent can be that you can use as this. So then the final level. Now this is it. This is just what it is. It's his advance. Um, once again, the principles are all the same. I can't touch him. He can't touch me, but I can touch him. So basically, you're gonna make crosses. If he's coming this way. You're, you're crossing at a right angle. Thumb on the, the blade so it doesn't just spin back this way, so you have some power. And you learn 
the thing that, that I concentrate on this is how do you let the weapon do what the weapon does, whatever you're using. What, and you can apply this to any weapon, like chopsticks or, or stick or whatever. How do you find out what that weapon holds? So here, cut. So it goes back this way. Cut. Come straight in. Form a T. And we'll actually add a technique after this. Cut. Peel. And then um, <laughs> um, And uh, one more for fun. Uh, as he swings wide, he's here, step back, come in, trap him, <coughs> break, snapping, control. So that's what we're going to cover.